career paths in service design. Where do I even start? In this episode, you'll learn why it's so important to have clarity in a company, especially around service design roles. Here's the guest for this episode. Let the show begin. Hi, this is Doug, and this is the Service Design Show, episode 172. Hi, my name is Mark Fontaine, and welcome back to the Service Design Show. On this show, we explore what's beneath the surface of service design. What are the secrets, lessons, and methods you need to know about to be successful as a service design professional, all to help you make greater impact on the challenges that matter to you. Our guest in this episode is Doc Powell, a well-respected executive design leader with a track record at companies like IBM and more recently Expedia. Today, Doc helps companies to gain clarity around job descriptions and responsibilities and career frameworks, especially around design roles. Why? Simply because having job clarity is a catalyst for improved performance and employee satisfaction. But as you may have experienced yourself, most companies don't have a clear standard or structure around design roles, let alone a clear career path for design professionals. So rather than waiting for that to change, Doc argues that you can be proactive about it. Start building relationships with HR and help them to put the right career frameworks in place. And in that way, help to elevate the design maturity within the entire organization. So if you stick around till the end of this episode, you'll learn why design isn't well represented in the current career frameworks, which approach you can take to define those clear job descriptions and responsibilities and which compromises you can and can't make when you're working on the organizational plumbing. By the way, if you enjoy conversations like this that help you to grow as a service design professional, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, because we bring a new conversation like this every week or so. That about wraps it up for the intro. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and deep dive into the conversation with Doc Powell. Welcome back to the show, Doc. Hi, Mark. Great to be here. <laughs> uh, I have a quiz question for you, and you haven't prepared. Uh, are you ready for it? Uh, fire away. <laughs> yes, I'm ready. So uh, you've been a guest on the show before. Do you recall which episode it was? I was just thinking that, uh, and uh, uh, I don't recall what it was, but I know you've been doing the, the show for about six years, uh, and it must have been five years ago. So I'm guessing Ooh. it's, it's uh, what, 20 or 30, maybe? It's, um, I was, I double checked it. It was episode 48, it was published okay. on March 22nd, 2018. We're going to air this episode on March 30th, 2023. So it's like almost on it's, on the week five years yeah, ago. Our, an our anniversary, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing has happened in the last five every, years. <laughs> yeah, every five years we need to do this again. I, uh, that's that's a good thing. I'll add it to my calendar. Uh, reminder to uh, invite Doc for the next uh, 10 year anniversary. <laughs> Mm, that's right yeah so we're back to revisit some uh things see what uh, what has changed uh, uh i would encourage people to look at for the episode and listen to episode 48 to to get a sense of the zeitgeist uh back in 2018 and maybe compare it to what's happening today it's definitely different um doc we didn't have this element uh when you were on in uh, 2018 but uh, this is new at least it's been going for a while but it's new for you i have five uh simple questions to get to know you as a person next to the professional uh just the first thing that comes to your mind we won't dive into these questions any deeper but hopefully we'll get to know you a bit better okay yeah all right yeah there we go what's always in your fridge uh, the first thing that came to my mind was mustard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why? Anywho, uh, if you could <laughs> recommend one book for someone to read, which book would you recommend? 
I would recommend um, Notes on an Execution. Mm. Wow. A thriller. Okay. A thriller from last year. Mm. Yeah. Great book that I read over the holidays. Mm. Loved it. Adding the link in the show notes. Next uh, question is, if you could work from anywhere in the world, which place would you pick? I would pick, um, I think, uh, Barcelona. I, I, although I, 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 I answer that more on just any place in the world that I'd like to be, mm -hmm. but maybe the work part <laughs> I should, I should consider more, but, uh, but it's one of my favorite cities. No. So I will, uh, I will, I will, I'll hold on to Barcelona. Okay. Noted. Uh, next question is, uh, what did you want to become when you were a kid? I wanted to be an artist. Um, you know, I was the I was always the kid who could draw when I was uh, when I was young, and uh, and I didn't know at the time I didn't know anything about design or, you know, what the possibilities were. So I wanted to do that. I wanted to make pictures, and uh, and uh, at least in in the early part of my career, I was able to do that. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, not going into that topic deeper. So many questions. Uh, final question here is uh, also a tradition. Um, do you recall the first time you sort of heard about service design? Uh, yes, yes. I think it was uh, it was probably when I uh, uh, I w had a, a leadership role with uh, the organization in the U.S. called AIGA which is uh, the Professional Association for Design in the US. And I was in that role kind of in the, in the, the what would they, what, would, what are we calling them now? The, uh, the late aughts. Um, and uh, so, it, you know, probably 15 years ago uh, in that role, as I was uh, working with designers of all practices and disciplines, across the US and getting to know uh, the profession and, and, uh, and how designers were working at that time. And service design was really, uh, um, you know, just coming onto the scene, in the, especially in the US in those years. And so that was when I, when I first uh, began to encounter, um, you know, the, 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 uh, the, these really sort of deep, thoughtful, um, fascinating ways of working as a designer. Hmm. 15 years ago. Yeah. There was there were the early days. It's, yeah. Yeah. And it still sometimes feels as their early days, but uh, it's it, good to we're still <laughs> we'll talk about that, I'm sure, but yeah. Yeah, yeah but we, 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 we did make some still progress in the early days. <laughs> Thank you uh, for sharing that and uh get to know that we need to send you mustard uh, uh as a birthday gift or next time you are on stage. You know, <laughs> Yeah, you know, you 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 said the first thing that comes to yeah. comes to your mind, and so uh, there, there you go. Well, what doesn't go with mustard, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Doug? When I say career frameworks for service design professionals, what do you say? Well, I say it's a, it's it's a very important topic. Um, it's one that is very timely. I think as we see service design and design more broadly scaling in complex organizations and companies, um, we uh, we are seeing the need for uh, service design to fit into job architectures and career frameworks that in many cases are already existing um, in these companies. And if if we don't, there's a real risk that um, that the that the practice will be marginalized, and importantly, that we won't take advantage of those career opportunities that are very present in in, in bigger companies. Um, and so, uh, you know, this is the this is the time for us, um, you know, at this, you know, as 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 you said a moment ago, you know, service design is still is still a, a relatively new thing. And uh, you know this is sort of part of the housekeeping of uh, of of a practice that is maturing and beginning to embed in uh, in these uh, these bigger organizations. Mm. So I think it's an important time, important topic, and important time. I had written down here on uh, my notes. It's uh, maybe about finally starting to plug service design into the operating system of the organization. Uh, 
at least it feels uh, like that for me. I think it's good if we start with uh, some context. So you've had uh, very interesting roles in the uh, past decade. What is your um, relationship to this topic of career frameworks, career paths? Like how how did how did this come onto your agenda? Yeah. Well, I uh, in the last decade, I've I've spent time with two companies, uh, IBM. Uh, and Expedia Group. And in both cases, a, 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 a central part of my role was to, uh, to manage uh, and ensure that design practices and design ro job roles were properly represented in the company's career architecture and career framework. That is... Um, that, that is a very unsexy, unglamorous job, <laughs> to be very honest. It's a, it's a lot about the plumbing of the company. And, um, and in my time, especially at IBM, because I was there for uh, nearly nine years, um, I uh, discovered that, um, that, that it was a, the plumbing was a mess. Uh, the, the plumbing was in really bad shape and we needed to, to, to do some very, um, very difficult, um, very intensive work to, to get under the house, to get in there, get, you know, roll up our sleeves and just correct things and get things, you know, uh, in place so that they were more sustainable. And so that individual designers, service designers, UX designers, design researchers, design technologists were able to uh, progress in their careers um, according to the work that they were actually doing. That sounds like a very obvious thing, but um, it wasn't the case when I and my team at IBM first started unpacking that career framework at the company. What we found instead was that there were dozens of different job roles, job titles, uh, uh, you know, uh, job descriptions that had been placed in there at one time or another over the course of many years to the point where it had just grown to this beast of a, you know, uh, of a, a, a document. Um, and consequently, um, the, the 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 consequences of that were that designers were not being um, being really represented in the the career framework in a clear way. Um, so an individual designer could not chart their course, uh, their future path, in a uh, in a way that made sense to them. So there were there, there was some important work that we needed to do there. That sounds really interesting, and I think uh, a lot of listeners will be able to relate. And when you say um, individual designers weren't able to sort of plot their next career step, something must have happened, as in, like, or, or was it like a status quo? Like, what happened at that time with those individual contributors? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can imagine that uh, that at, say, annual review time, job review, performance review, whatever you call it in, in your company. And a manager uh, is looking at the, the performance history of their employee, um, you know, ser service designer Mark, and saying, um, wow, it looks like you are, uh, you know, and, and service designer Mark has been doing phenomenal work over the last year, just really, really um, helping the team, contributing at a high level. But the manager is looking at what Mark is supposed to be doing according to the, to the job architecture and saying, Mark, you, you didn't meet any of these goals that a UX designer is supposed to be doing. A UX designer is supposed to be uh, making wireframes and um, and, uh, and, and doing you know, uh, documentation on... on uh, you know, with our, with our de de development partners and so on. Why aren't you doing that? Well, Mark would say, of course, I'm a service designer. That's not, <laughs> that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be doing 
service blueprints and and uh, and primary research and 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 all of these uh, you know important contributions that a service designer does. And the manager will say, "Oh, well, wait a second. There's a there's a problem here because I don't even know how to measure you on what you're actually doing." And that and that was exact. I mean, I'm I, I'm fictionalizing a little bit there, but that was actually what was happening. And I and my team were hearing about this over and over that, uh, hey, I've got this great, this great high performing team member. um, And yet I can't, uh, I I, I can't um, put them up for a promotion because according to the career framework, they're not doing a great job. So that was that was just a, a a real realization, and and I know that you know uh, um, that's based on my my experience at a couple of companies, um, and I know talking to peers across the industry that that's that's happening in in other in other places as well, and you know we'll get we'll get into maybe some of the root causes of that, but you know uh, um, that's not. That's not to shame anyone. It's not the fault of anyone for uh, for the condition that the job architecture and career framework uh, is uh, ends up in. It oftentimes is is um, is the result, for instance, of of mergers. You know, where two companies are coming together and two career frameworks are coming together and they just don't match up. So you've got a service designer who came from. From this company, but now they're over in in another company, and their their performance and their job role doesn't doesn't transfer you know neatly into that new company. So there's a lot of you know in 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 the in the modern business world, there's a lot of reasons why that why that can happen, mm. and and it can just get very complex. I can totally see that this causes a lot of friction, frustration, uh, not being seen, uh, not knowing how to. Um, appreciate people uh, for the work that they are doing, um, f- unfortunately. But I think that's maybe also part of an or- organic growth or mergers. Um, I'm not super familiar with career frameworks and uh, career architectures. Could you unpack that a little bit for me? Because I can make some assumptions about what it is. I can imagine that there are job descriptions there, but like, what are some of those the, the key elements that go into a career framework? Sure. Well, um, the, the first would be the the, the sort of the uh, I'll state 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 the obvious per, perhaps, but that uh, that there are different levels um, and uh, different companies will call this uh, uh, you know will have different vernacular and vocabulary for this uh, at at IBM for instance they were called band levels um, so. You know, and they were they were numbered so that uh, a, a a designer would uh, come into the company at a band six or a band seven, sort of an entry level. They would progress through these band levels, roughly every um, you know two to three, maybe four years. There was a promotion to, or the expectation for a promotion to an, a next band level. So at each of those career levels. Uh, there is an articulation of what is expected of a fill in the blank, a service designer, UX designer, design researcher at that level. Um, and uh, in most cases, I'm speaking uh, generally here, the scope of their work uh, um, gradually but but steadily sort of broadens as they progress through that um, through, through that, those those career levels, um, so that a, a a a designer starting out might be focused on a very individual project, one project at a time, uh, you know, very sort of narrow focus. As they move to the as they move to the next um, you know level, they might be taking on uh, multiple projects. Next level, they're leading teams that are. Working on multiple projects, et cetera, et cetera, uh, to the point where you know at the highest levels they've got uh, a scope that that um, extends across a, a whole company, perhaps. Um, again, at each of those levels, we need to state very clearly what is the expectation of that 
service designer at that level of their career so that when a manager and a designer are getting together regularly to talk about the performance and to map out their career, they've got, they've got, a, um, they've got a document that can help them with that. Uh, it's, it's as simple as that. It's, it can be as simple as that. Um, as you can imagine, these, these things uh, uh, don't, uh, aren't, aren't usually written or crafted or created by designers. Um, they're created by human resources uh, departments and big companies. So uh, they're oftentimes very, um, not, not very human centric uh, and, uh, and not very consumable, you know, uh, um, and that's problematic. Uh, we, we can we can discuss that a little uh, a little later because there's a big opportunity there, obviously. Um, but that's 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 the general idea of what a, a career framework in a big company might be. Yeah. So a common language, a shared understanding, documented, standardized, agreed upon um, um, uh, something you can point to, a single source of truth. Those are the words that come to my mind. Uh, like you say, yeah. not very sexy, but if you don't have it, uh, it's it's the cause of a lot of frustration. Right. Let me let me add one mm -hmm. one thing uh, that that uh, you know because design and certainly service design are are fairly new jobs. Um, it's it's perhaps important to state that uh, we are grafting, in most cases, grafting design roles onto existing career frameworks. So that's that's important. I don't think any of us as as design uh, designers and design leaders uh, would create a a career framework the way that it has been created in most big companies if we had it to do from scratch. We don't have it to do from scratch. We almost never do. We're almost always uh, building on an existing framework and an existing framework that's kind of a mess. So that's, that's, um, that's, that's worth stating that we don't have ideal conditions usually to, to work with. Yeah. What would we do differently if we did get the opportunity to start from scratch like what are the limitations of the existing frameworks that you've seen well i i i think that what they what they don't do well what, what i think about is what is the outcome that we are that we are trying to achieve we're trying to to bring value to a company we are trying to um uh put a an employee a designer in the position where they can be as successful as possible and contribute as much value as possible to that to that company and we are trying to create an opportunity for a designer and their manager to uh, to have a constructive conversation on a regular basis about how to achieve those things and then how in turn to advance the career of that designer so that conversation becomes a very important, uh, a very important thing. We're trying to facilitate and inspire a positive, constructive, healthy conversation between usually two people, two or three people, um, uh, and and it's very hard. There, there are very. I mean, there are some, you know, uh, uh, unicorn managers who who are able to you know, who to, are able to achieve that from the, the raw material that they're usually given in a, in a, in a career framework and, and job architecture. But that's, that's very challenging. And so it's a missed opportunity, uh, a, a, a missed opportunity for us to, to create a, a really sort of positive exchange. Uh, instead, we end up just hacking our way through a, a really um, unfriendly system. Mm. And unfriendly in the sense that it becomes primarily used to uh, critique and uh, review and assess rather than open up space and possibilities. Yeah, yeah. No, you've got that right. It becomes a, a you know, a, yeah, kind of a, a stick. Test. It becomes a stick. <laughs> a stick. A stick. That's a great way. It, it, it's a great way to to frame it. It's not a 
it's 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 not almost never is it uh, is it an an inspirational aspirational uh, you know set of material. Yeah, and there's the opportunity. So um, let's jump into uh, the world of HR. What do we need to know as service design professionals about HR? You know, we need to we need to know that uh, you know an HR department is you know they are responsible for all the jobs in in an entire company, uh, and so uh, you know service design and 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 other design practices are not uh, they're a, a, a drop in the bucket. <laughs> you know, they're very. A very small, uh, you know, uh, with with all due respect, a very usually a very, um, you know, not not a not a a, a a real significant concern for for HR departments. So, um, I I always find that the the important um, the important thing for for us to do as as design leaders is to become friends with the with our hr partners <laughs> it's that and and I, I i laugh at that because it seems very simple but but really that trust and that relationship and getting to understand and empathize with what what they are what those hr uh, teams are are charged with what they're accountable for what they're trying to achieve and what they know ultimately um, is uh, is super important, and the stronger you can build those relationships, uh, the the you know the more good work you're able to do in, in that world. So, uh, from your experience, how can we help them help us? What what do we need to do, or what have you done, or when do they start to pay attention? Well, what I've found is uh, which is is um, that that HR professionals, um, you know, they've got a they've they, they've got a very difficult job. They're working with a lot of constraints and and a in a very sort of dense system. And we as designers work in a very different way. And I found that when we can invite HR our HR partners into our world and into our way of working. They love it. And so if we can begin to think about this work, not as the drudgery of, of working through the dense system of, of HR in a big company, but as a really interesting service design project, which it is, um, and, we, and we can look at those uh, you know the, those HR partners as important stakeholders, important users of this system, and we can co-create with them. That that changes the whole complexion of the work, and oftentimes, as I said, those HR partners just love to come into our world, and I've found that over and over that that you know they that back to the relationship and the trust that becomes a very um, uh, important way of building, uh, building that trust with them. Um, and, uh, you know, it can be very, very positive. Uh, so, so uh, you know, I guess the core idea there is um, don't abandon your superpower of working as a service designer in order to do this work that seems like it's very, um, different from service. Mm -hmm. And in this case, uh, I can totally see that this as a design challenge that uh, uh, we can absolutely tackle. Have you experienced that HR is able to uh, frame this as a, a brief? As in, is it from your experience again is it a pull request or do we have to nudge them or like are are they in the unknown unknown space how does this start i think i think we have to nudge them i th and probably nudge them over and over again uh, because they in all likelihood those those hr folks uh, despite 
you know, I'm always assuming best intentions, despite being very good at their jobs, I'm sure, and very committed to the success of the company and the, and the people who work there. They, they, they don't understand that, hey, there's a, there's a whole new um, capability and a whole new um, type of talent and type of worker that is now present and embedded in this company. Um, you know, designers of, of many different practices who are contributing in a, in a new way, in a very unique way to the success of the company, they, they might, you know, they, they likely have a very, um, if, they, if, if they recognize, you know, design broadly at all, I'm certain, I'm certain that they don't understand the nuanced differences between a service designer and a UX designer and a design researcher and a design technologist and a UI designer. Those are, you know, they're quite obvious to you and me and, and the listeners of this podcast, but to that HR professional, al- almost certainly not, uh, not very, um, uh, you know, very obvious mm-hmm. to them. Mm-hmm. So we, the, the message here is that we definitely shouldn't wait for uh, this to happen and uh, be invited into the conversation. We sort of have to invite ourselves into the conversation if we want to create a better environment to be able to do our work better. Yes. If you, if, if you are listening to this podcast and you are leading a service design team and you don't know your HR partner in the company that you're working in, uh, you, that, that at the end of this podcast, <laughs> go on to your company directory and, uh, and, and find that person and reach out to them and set up a meeting to get to know them. Bring, some, bring is, some donuts. Yeah. <laughs> bring some donuts, bring some coffee and, and, uh, become their friend. <laughs> so. Could you share some examples of things that have helped uh, you in actually shaping this? Because, um, I don't know, artifacts or processes or tools, like what have you set up to make the plumbing work better? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Well, in my time at at IBM, the team that I was leading there uh, created a a really uh, awesome uh, a designer career playbook, uh, which was, uh, you know, back to the idea of, of this, making this material as consumable as possible. Uh, that was the brief that we set for ourselves, uh, in, in creating that. And we, we created a very, um, accessible, a uh, very, uh, consumable, a very usable, um, uh, playbook for designers and their managers. Um, and we measured the success of that, not on, um, you know, uh, simply getting it out and publishing it and getting it out into the, uh, you know, uh, on some company intranet, but, uh, but rather on, on how, how frequently it was used. And, uh, and, and that was, uh, the, and so, so that's, that also uh, meant that we needed to get out there and, and promote it. Uh, we needed to train uh, managers on how to use it. Um, there was a whole change management aspect to that, um, to that project that was, was as important as the playbook itself. Um, we paid a lot of attention to the, uh, to the tone, to the, to the, to the way that the content was, uh, uh, written, um, and the, the language that we used, uh, so that it was inclusive. It was, um, uh, very positive and upbeat that it, we, we avoided many of the, um, that the, the trappings and the downfalls of typical HR material that you might get on the, you know, uh, you know, as you're, as you're working in a big company, that technical language, that dense language, we really, really tried to, to, um, to, to clarify, um, and create, a you know, uh, a resource that uh, that was as uh, consumable as possible. And when you say or mention success or impact and uh, how how it was used, 
what what changed in practice like what what stories came back well uh, well you know you can look at the growth of for instance uh the the lead at at IBM and their and their career framework uh the um the the principal level which is uh you know a very senior individual contributor uh level you know they now have i don't know the numbers i haven't been with the company for a couple of years now but at the time that i left i think they were up to about 60 um principal designers uh of all practices um across the company uh when i started there in 2013 there were no principals so uh you know there's an exponential increase in the in the level of um of of those those most senior individual contributor designers um so many of those most the the vast number of those did not come into the company as principals right so they came in at some lower level of that career career hierarchy and um and progressed through you know some number of promotions to get to that principal level so that suggests that there's the you know that some of the work that we were doing was contributing to that progression um and uh, that's that, that's a very a very positive sign and an important one and what you see happening uh if people progress and uh get more experienced and take on more leadership roles is uh i'm assuming the overall design maturity within the company rises and grows as well like your people grow so does your design maturity maturity yeah exactly exactly the maturity of your practice the maturity of your teams uh the recognition of of design as a practice by other you know cross functional um stakeholders in, in the company those those partners that we're working with every day who are not designers who who you know because we're working with them every day they need to know who we are what we do how we do it why it's important um and that all of those things are are measures of uh and factors of maturity um and yeah. it's interesting that you mentioned also the uh the partners within the company in the previous episode which you haven't heard yet uh, Neve Parsley from Spotify talks about also like having something tangible to point to um uh, creates recognition within the organization like hey uh this is real this isn't just uh yeah. something that we've made up or like we can actually point to an official document and a part of the operating system that recognizes um the value the contribution the fact that something yeah. like service design exists or ux design or ux researcher uh so yeah. uh, did you experience the same thing that it adds to the credibility yeah. within the organization yeah and and that's a great insight uh, and um another thing that uh especially in in older companies i worked at at, at IBM and uh, IBM is a more than 100 year old company um they have uh when i when i joined in, in 2013 and when we were originally building the uh the the design program there um we uh we were able to uh, learn about the uh the technical awards that uh, career awards and uh, uh career recognition for very senior and and uh highly accomplished technical leaders in their in their system previously the idea of being a technical leader meant that you were a, a software engineer uh, that was the the idea there was that that was the definition of of being a technical leader well what we were able to do was to uh to get design and design in in all of its practice areas uh included as a technical discipline so that part of the one of the outcomes that we were reaching for there was that we could get designers included as in these technical awards that are very highly um acknowledged and appreciated across the company so at IBM the highest level of of being a technical leader is the is being an IBM fellow it's very distinguished honor 
um, not only in the company, but, uh, you know, across the industry, it's very recognized. They make a big celebration out of it every year when they name their fellows. Well, we were able to get uh, designers into that, that system so that designers could become IBM fellows. Um, and, uh, and, and we're able to get, uh, um, the de- designers as fellows there. Um, and so, uh, I, I guess, uh, the, the, the idea there is that most companies have some sort of a, um, you know, car- very, you know, very senior career recognition system like that. Um, so go learn about that and see uh, see how you can get service design um, sort of included in that um, in that existing system. Mm. And this is something uh, I'm glad you bring this up because I think people underestimate how powerful it is to actually plug into the existing again operating system. Um, I'll give a different example to sort of enrich maybe this story is that um, if you want to put design on the map, try to get design into meetings. Meetings are things that happen like, I don't know how often, like 80% of an organization is meetings. <laughs> if you want to get design within the company, get get design in meetings. And I think what you're sharing as well is there is already a heritage there is already a system there is already a structure like it's really yeah. challenging to build something next to it and then try to get people to cross the bridge to the other side it's much easier to start sort of from the inside and and yeah leverage what's already there and, and what's already understood mm-hmm. um, and when you're talking back to our earlier point about getting those non-design stakeholders across the company to appreciate uh, design uh, do, doing doing some of these steps that we're talking about now and and, and connecting into existing systems um, allows them to do that on a familiar framework they they understand that being a distinguished engineer at a company is a very impressive, very uh, highly regarded honor. Well, now there's a, a, a role called a distinguished designer, a distinguished service designer. Oh, I know what that, I know what that means. That's, that means that you, you are the most eminent, most experienced uh, leader in that practice at this company. Um, so I have a high regard for you. You know, that, that, that familiarity really, um, really can play to our advantage if we can leverage. Mm-hmm. So uh, this uh, career playbook, I'm, I'm butchering the name, uh, but mm-hmm. yeah. there was a That's success it. and uh, uh, using or plugging it into the uh, uh, career labels uh, and uh, having something like a distinguished designer, that also works. Some interesting examples of things you tried that didn't work. Um, well, I I, I think uh, that you know there there are certainly some uh, some um, some of the more thorny problems of you know, for instance, uh, job titling. I mean, the 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 the, the as 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 you know the the job titles in the design industry is, uh, you know, they're just so, uh, so uh, such a mess. Uh, there, you know, uh, there are just so many, um, and very confusing, especially in the, in those sort of middle career years where, uh, you know, a senior designer at uh, a senior service designer at one company might be, um, uh, the equivalent of a lead designer at another company. And, uh, you know, sometimes there are these very confusing, um, uh, career levels like a designer two or a designer three. Well, what does that mean? Um, I, I think, you know, I, I, I think we've got some real work to do. And I know that, uh, you know, in, in both my, my time at, at, uh, at IBM, and at Expedia, uh, working through those individual uh, titlings and cleaning up, getting to that level of, of cleaning up this, the system. Um, 
we we haven't quite gotten there yet and partly because changing someone's title to align with the uh the, an hr system can have real um real ramifications for that individual designer if we're saying hey you know you used to be a a, a lead designer but now you're going to be a senior designer because we needed to clean up the system you know that's <laughs> that if if i'm that designer and that's the change that's being made to, to me that that has real uh you know that that can mean a lot of you know hard stuff for me uh as a as a designer working my way through my career so um you know i think we've got we've got work to do there i imagine i've i've seen this in in both of the big companies that I've worked at, you know, in, in recent years, I I imagine that is uh, that most companies are are working through that and struggling with it, and uh, it's going to take us some time. We're we're still a a relatively new um, you know uh, discipline, and uh, so some of these uh, some of these challenges are kind of symptomatic of the relative immaturity of of the uh, of the profession right now while you were sharing this i was thinking um is it is it immaturity or is it also uh just part of the dna or of our field as in are we are we pushing against being boxed in and maybe creating no no i don't think we're creating sort of a mist uh uh to sabotage things but just like we like freedom i like i oh. you can't stick a label on me kind of thing uh have you <laughs> have you heard that have you seen something like that sure oh sure i think i think it, i think you've touched on something very 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 real about uh about many designers i mean we're we we've we've always been the outsider uh and we've to i i think what you're what you're suggesting perhaps is that we enjoy being the outsider that that's um that's where we fit in that's where we feel comfortable and what what i'm suggesting is that in order to do to, to to advance our profession we need to become insiders in other words get into these systems and and get get smart about them and and work within them you know that that may be counterintuitive that may be kind of uh, beyond counterintuitive that might be a uh you know uh i don't know nails on a chalkboard for mm -hmm. <laughs> for a designer who's like i don't want to i don't want to be in a corporate hr system um but when we're talking about scale when we're talking about an entire profession and many many companies and we're talking about hundreds thousands of of uh of designers um you know, perhaps working within a, a, even a single company, um, you know, we need to, if, if we're going to do that in a sustainable way, then we need to, uh, we need to be smart about these systems and we need to work within them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, the thing you mentioned about scale, that's, I think key here because you can probably get away with this in a team of 10, right? In a team of 10, you're still yeah. okay. But if you want to grow yeah. from 10 to a hundred, like, you need yeah. you need some structure. You need uh, you need to operationalize. You need to standardize. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be impossible to hire. It's going to be impossible to advance in your career. And uh, and and that shift that that you just articulated it that shift from teams a team of ten to a team of a hundred is exactly what has been happening over the last decade. That that is the <laughs> that is exactly the uh the evolution uh and the progression that we have that we have all seen um to to our benefit of course i mean you know we've got you know we've got more influence than uh than ever before and we're doing work in in more important ways i think than ever before uh but uh you know absolutely we're we're in a place now where we need to operate um more uh smartly and uh and and take advantage of these these uh these dense complex systems i was thinking uh 
we probably don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Like we are not the first ones trying to figure out how to standardize roles and how to make this work, even probably not in the design profession. I'm imagining we have huge agencies. Uh, they must have frameworks in place. Uh, why aren't we reusing more of this knowledge, which I imagine must be out there? It's a good question. So uh, what, if I'm hearing you right, uh, there's an, there's perhaps an opportunity for us to be sharing, uh, you know, sharing frameworks, sharing materials, uh, um, sharing our, our research across organizations and across companies. And, um, you know, what I've found is that companies are very, very sensitive about, uh, about HR material. Hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, they, um, I, I would, I would have loved in my time at IBM with that, uh, that brilliant design, designer career playbook that I mentioned, I would have loved to bring that out to the, to the industry and say, Hey, this is what we did. What are you all working on? But that's just, it's, there's a lot of sensitivity around that. And it just, what makes it sensitive? Is is it compensation, salaries, or I I I think I I think so. I think it's the compensation. Um, you know, just uh, there's such a um, you know a confidentiality. Um, maybe it's intellectual property, but it it seems it seems more than that. Mm. It, it seems uh, like the um, you know it's it. I'm not an HR professional, so I'm, I'm, I'm reaching a bit here, but you know, I, I, there are legal concerns. There are, are compensation concerns. There are concerns about privacy and, uh, of, of, you know, individual, you know, employee performance, you know, material. Um, I, I wish it wasn't the case because I do, I do think there's an opportunity to your point to, uh, for all of us to to get better if we could share some of this stuff, but it's it's challenging. It's hard. And I'm in a lucky position not to be part of a huge uh, corporation <laughs> and not having to deal with these le legal and, and jurisdictional constraints. But uh, nevertheless, if you're listening to this conversation and you do have access to these materials and you're proud of them, of what you've developed, then you can share them, uh, reach out to me because I think this would be a great way to sort of one, um, help the community forward and two also, uh, shine a light on your organization and show that you're doing, uh, awesome stuff. So I, I'd be happy to start a, uh, I don't know, a career framework archive on service design jobs.com. Um, if companies want to share, I'd be curious and I would, I would challenge companies out there to be, uh, to be more open about this. I, I, I think that's I, I think that's a, a great challenge, a great provocation and prompt. Um, and uh, and even if it's, um, you know, hey, we can't we can't share the, the end result, but we can share the story of how we how we worked through the process. Even those um, anecdotes, I've told a few here about my time at, at IBM and Expedia, um, you know, those those are important for us to to hear and to share and um you know i think there's probably some wisdom we can we can gain from each other by uh by being a little bit more open about just the the process of working through all of this stuff uh, i need a few more hosts on the show there are so many topics that i would like love to explore there's just so much uh, still to uncover uh <laughs> so th that's another call to action if you if you are for yeah. being a, a host on a podcast then uh reach out to me maybe we can uh do something together uh sort of heading towards the uh end of our chat here uh doug i'm curious if you reflect back on uh your past five years because that's how long it's been since you've been on the show what is maybe the thing you wish you would have known about this topic of careers career frameworks hr uh i i wish we would have been uh you know i i again i was at at ibm for over eight years uh, i i think we we weren't uh, we weren't sharp enough early enough there in my time. And I take this on uh, myself. I'm not, you know, 
pointing the finger at the company or anything, but, uh, but it, it took us uh, several years to really discover what a, uh, what a problem we had on our hands and a, and a few more years to work out the solutions to it. And so we lost some time there. You know, uh, I wish we were more, uh, more on the front foot uh, as opposed to, you know, being, uh, discovering that we had a, a, a real, not crisis, but a real, you know, a, a real problem. Uh, on our hands that, you know, when you, when you're, when you're in that mode, you're more reactionary, you're more, you know, you're chasing, you're chasing it as opposed to, you know, leaning into it. And, and I don't think we, we had the, the chance to do that, which is why, you know, I, my, my core advice to those listeners is, is if, if, if you're in a role where you're at that your earlier point in the in the trajectory and the evolution of service design within your company get lean into it get get ahead of it get uh you know do that um do that discovery that internal discovery uh, as soon as possible and and understand what you're working with it, it it feels like this is uh one of those pieces of the puzzle that uh when you're still small, you don't miss it. Like you can, you can hack your way around these things. Uh, but the moment you sort of start reaching again, going for skill, um, everything comes cr crumbling down and you sort of see that you don't have a good foundation to scale up on. And, uh, th this is one of those things that's really hard to find the time and invest in at the start, because it's not needed at the start. It feels like, like, why do you, why should we put time and effort into this? We, we, we can hack our way around. We're going, we're going at our, at our frantic pace. We're doing awesome stuff. Why should we bother about something like a career framework? You know, such an opportunity here. And again, just to come back to the, the possibility or the opportunity for us to always, uh, to, uh, to be, to, to approach these problems as design problems rather than as, you know, corporate hr problems that's 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 what i what i really hope um you know we we seize uh, partly because we can really inspire uh our partners in these hr organizations to to be more human centered to work with a more uh you know a, a work in a more design driven way and that is good for companies mm. um that is that is uh that is something that we can bring that is beyond our individual impact that that is a way uh, that is impacting the way a company works and and the culture of the company so um i i hope we hang on to that idea too if uh, i'm going to try something new um if you could leave us with uh, a question, something to ponder upon, something to reflect upon after this conversation, what do you think would be a helpful, valuable, meaningful question? Uh, well, I mean, we're always uh, working in, in how might we's, uh, that's our, that's one of our, uh, signature uh, moves, you know, as, <laughs> as designers. Yeah. That's one of our, uh, so how, you know, how might we ensure that, that service design career paths are clearly defined, um, and embedded in a company's HR systems, uh, so that the designers can be as successful as they can can have great careers and can contribute to the, uh, the success of a company. Um, that, that's, that's the question that I would ask and the hope that I would have for, for us, uh, as we move into the next five years, Mark, as we, as we think about our, 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 uh, uh, our, our podcast five years from now, um, you know, I hope we're seeing that, uh, we've got service designers in very, uh, who who have who have been able to progress through their careers at uh, at companies to very senior levels, and that we're seeing more uh, you know executive level uh, service design leaders um, in you know companies across the industry across the uh, across the world. Really, I'm hopeful uh, based on what I'm seeing in the street. I'm very hopeful. Uh, 
but uh, as with always with these things is uh, if we can do anything to accelerate it, that's just going to benefit everybody. So on that note, I want to thank you, Doug, for coming back on, uh, sharing this hour and sharing this question uh, with the community. Uh, always helpful, always insightful. Uh, thank you for being open. Uh, and I'm curious where your journey uh, will take you in the, in the next months and years. I am too. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you uh, again for inviting me, Mark. It's always great to spend time with you and uh, look forward to uh, connecting uh, down the line and doing this again sometime. Completing the trilogy. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Mark. Okay. So on a scale from one to five, how well is design represented in your company's career framework? Leave a comment down below and let us know. I want to thank Doug once again for coming on and sharing his experience with us. I really hope that you enjoyed it and learned something new. I've been sharing conversations with industry legends like Doug here on this channel for over six years now, and I don't plan to stop anytime soon. So if you don't want to miss any of the future conversations, make sure you subscribe to the channel. My name is Mark Fontaine and I want to thank you for spending a part of your day with me. It's an absolute honor. Keep making a positive impact and I hope to see you soon in the next video.